Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back. This is the, what is this, Julie? This is the fourth show Mm -hmm. about 20 hidden sources of homes for sale. And it actually is, I think, working out to be about 40 different sources for homes to sale. Once we get going. Once we get going, because we think of more while we're going through these and add to our uh, notes as we are going along. By the way, all of our notes are always available at our main website for our podcast, timandjulieharris.com. We do load these to iTunes, our notes to iTunes and to Spotify, and then sometimes they show up on all the other podcast apps, but really for sure they'll be on Spotify and on iTunes. And by the way, when you're over there reading along and you're reading our notes, please do give us a five-star review. A lot of you have been doing that. We certainly appreciate it on Spotify and on iTunes. It makes an enormous difference in telling the uh, Spotify and iTunes algorithm that our podcast is definitely something that you appreciate and maybe they should share it with other uh, potential agents and listeners. So please do share our podcast by giving us a five-star review and do share it with three other agents that you might know. And this is, and then if you're listening to us on YouTube, though it pains me to say this, mm-hmm. <laughs> but do smash the like button and do please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. The podcast is, uh, and I would imagine it's going to continue to pick up new listeners every single day. Our YouTube channel could do a lot better, so please do support us there by subscribing and by, um, you know, obviously liking the com or liking the videos as well. And this is, and will hopefully continue for some time to come, uh, is the number one listened to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States and now, Julie, ready for it? Yes. 63 different wow. countries. Yeah. Nice. Now, we're not number one in 63 different countries. I'm just saying we're being downloaded and listened to in 63 different countries. So it's pretty awesome. And uh, thank you for listening to us on a regular basis. Many of you are regular listeners. Thank you for allowing Julie and I to live our mission, which is being of service to all of you in the betterment of your skill set so that you then hopefully will feel educated, motivated, and get you into action helping people because of this market. So talking about this market, and then we're going to get to point number 17. There is going to be, over the next 30 days, listen to your coach or maybe Julie now your future coach. Listen to what we're telling you now. There is going to be an avalanche of what's going to feel like very negative news about housing. And the reason that it's going to be coming out is because of more rate hikes. And it's going to be all a bunch of uh, bloviation trying to basically get you to click and read the headlines. Now, you will be smart enough because you're a Tim and Julie Harris podcast listener to cut through the Mickey Mouse and know the truth. But your buyers and your sellers and everyone else, general public, most likely will not. So a lot of people are going to be going into some varying degree of fear mode. And when that happens, people definitely are a little bit more reluctant to make decisions. And that then creates some emotional consternation. And that is by design because what the Fed is thinking that they're going to do is head off uh, rising inflation. And that's going to slow the economy down. Well, the best way to slow the economy down is make people feel less confident. And when people feel less confident, they'll spend – they'll be more selective on, you know, essentially taking out loans in particular. Well, you cannot allow this cycle to adversely affect your potential in the real estate industry, especially this year, because here is what all of you know is uh, intuitively, you know what I'm about to say is true. I'm just wondering if you're taking action on it. Well, everybody else is digging their bomb shelter and, you know, getting ready and, and buying their prepper supplies. And by the way, have you guys noticed that the prepper emails are starting to fly again? It's true. But when everyone else is essentially uh, going to f- into fear mode, you need to do the exact opposite because there still are millions and millions of real estate transactions to happen this year. But they won't happen if you're in fear mode because if you're in fear mode, if you're fearful or if you believe that tomorrow is not going to be better than today, you're not going to take the actions uh, that will be necessary for you to make tomorrow better than today. Matter of fact, you'll be in inaction or you'll actually do the opposite. Opposite, and then you will ins- you will lock in and ensure that your tomorrow is not better than today. It's all subconscious. It's a mental game right now. But don't think, no matter how strong your mindset is, Julie and I are not immune to it either. We can definitely feel it. So no matter how strong you think your mindset is, you need to make it stronger. And the best way for you to do that, the hack for it. You guys love the word hack, but the hack for it is is to put your state, put yourself in a state of being in service to other people. When you're helping other people buy or sell real estate, not only are you making money, not only are you feeling successful, but you're feeling the gratitude of being in alignment with your highest and truest purpose, which is 
being of service to others. And that is really ultimately what cures all. And one of the number one things all of you guys should be doing, we tell you this all the time on this podcast, is making sure you are being incredibly selective on who you listen to and what you read. Whatever you're allowing into your head right now has to be reinforcing you becoming the best version of yourself as a real estate professional and as a human, right? Has to be reinforcing that and not making you feel fearful. So if you're listening to something and you're reading something, you're watching something or you're interacting with people, and I want you to be monitoring, a strong suggestion is to monitor your internal state. How do you feel when you're listening to this podcast? How do you feel when you're watching CNN or Fox News? Do you feel the same? No, probably in this podcast, you're feeling very uplifted, encouraged, motivated because we're telling you the truth and you innately know it's the truth. Whereas when you're watching CNN or Fox, if you notice, and I'm not, you know, whatever, right? Whatever, for, it could be a podcast or it could be you're reading some newspaper. If you're noticing your emotional state is becoming clenched, tight, fear-based, do not consume any more of that garbage. Stop. You're being manipulated. And what comes after that is not anything that you want. You're going to naturally want to attract more fear-based content. And as a result of that, what are you not going to do? All the things that you should be doing to put yourself in a position to help people and make money. What are you thinking, Julie? I'm, I'm thinking, I'll tell you where that doesn't happen, is on our Facebook Live sessions. Amen. None of that happens on for, our Facebook Live. For Premier Coaching. For Premier Coaching. Because what we do there is talking about what is happening, what is working. And I'll tell you, I made, here's a, a trend alert. The trend alert is this. There are lots of listings coming, especially the second and third week of June. Mm -hmm. Why is that? It's because this fear and uncertainty, which, yes, largely is categorized by the news as, oh, no, the, you know, the world's coming to an end. You better hole up and, and get your prepper stuff ordered, right? But no, not amongst our crowd. Here's what our crowd hears. Uncertainty means that the most common listing I'm seeing right now is people who were going to sell anyway this year who are finding their motivation earlier this year. And these are people whose kids are finally getting out of school. They're graduating first and second week of June. Family house is getting sold, cashing out before whatever uncertainty hits. So people who are thinking, well, maybe I'll sell this year or next year. You know, I'm going to be a seller. I'm not keeping this house. Now, all of a sudden, they're finding their motivation to get while they're getting good because well, the perception is uncertainty. A hundred percent. Well, that's using uncertainty for, you know, basically people are not allowing it to hold off making decisions. They're using it as a motivation because they're That's fearful right. that the opportunity might not be as better in the future as it is now. And that might very well be true. Yep. But overall, the overarching trend for housing is all good. All good. All yes. good. There's more people that are going to be wanting houses than, frankly, there are going to be houses for sale. And we are in the longest of long-term uh, seller markets. This cycle is not going to end anytime soon. Again, I don't want to get too far off our points because we want to share with you guys ways to go out and find listing leads. But we are in a long-term cycle. This isn't six months or 12 nope. months or even 10 years We're, because it's going to take forever for there to be a number uh, – the number of new homes being constructed. By the time – like, for example, guys, the mega cycles, just to vamp on this for just a midget uh, – a, a midget, a minute, right? <laughs> right. I was thinking That's about That's a our, small minute. I was thinking maybe. about our daughter. Oh, right. she's, on, she's only four feet tall. Exactly. All right. So here's, here's what the bottom line is. The number of baby boomers that are going to be selling in the future and starting really now is massive. But the number of millennials that are going to be looking for homes to purchase is something like two to one. So even as the millennials, you know, say every baby boomer, you know, just to make it super simple, had, you know, two and a half kids, they had one house. Well, they're selling one house, but those are still two and a half people that are going to want to buy a house. You guys get the point? So there is not enough housing stock available in most of the country, which is going to continue these macro trends that we're seeing. People are going to move away from city centers. They're going to live in more rural areas. They're going to use things like Starlink. The whole nat national landscape of where people live, how they live, lifestyles, it's all changing. You guys are seeing that. You're feeling it. None of this should be new information. Now, what's going to happen on a grander scale? That eventually, new construction, the inflation of the uh, of Right now, new construction is out of reach for most Americans because the cost of building a house has gone through the roof. The building supply costs will eventually come down. That is uh, contributed to, frankly, inflation again, but also you could argue supply chain. Both those things are legitimate. But I know just, for example, in the United States, Julie and I live in Puerto Rico, so we say the mainland. In the mainland, 
uh, building a, a home in the past 18 months, the cost of new you know, windows and lumber and the rest of it, Huge. a 30% increase. Well, there hasn't been, there has been a 30% or a 20% increase in the cost of resale homes, but the uh, price disparity between a new construction home and a resale home is still too extreme. Uh, add to this the fact there's still not enough new construction homes being built. It is going to create a long-term bottleneck for the number of people that are selling versus the number of people that are buying. And further, and we're going to start talking about this more in another podcast, we have been, I don't even want to say the word warning, but really, let's just not mince words. We've been warning you guys, cautioning you <laughs> about the perils of being overly dependent on being a buyer's agent. Since Julie and I were in real estate, it started in the late 90s, a lot of agents got into the business, I'm going to be a buyer's agent. There was all this impetus behind being just focused on being a buyer's agent, and it all came from a good place. But there are some things that are happening right now legally, and not for this, not for today's show, for another show, that is going to, in essence, make it so that the buyer's agent business model is going to, frankly, be in, in, uh, in question. It is very possible within the next, say, two to three years or less that you're going to see nationally it's illegal for there to be a uh, mandate that the seller pays a buyer's agent's commission. So that's essentially – the impetus of these lawsuits that are now basically been, um, you know, certified. One in particular. Now, do I think that buyer's agent commissions are mandated? No. Do I think a seller can say no? I don't want to pay that, or I want to pay this versus where the standard is. Yes. Do I think there's any validity to these lawsuits? Who cares what I think? The bottom line is, is there are going to be things that are going to happen that are going to cause further downward pressure on buyer's agents' commissions. So if you are new in this business or if you're a seasoned veteran, you need to take seriously the fact that the market is going to be changing. But the number of transactions happening will not decrease. If anything, the demand for housing is going to increase. But the agents who are making the money, those people, that's going to change. So if you've been able to make a nice living off just working with buyers, you have to be accepting the fact that your headwinds are going to become so immense between the referral fees you're paying, between all the other Mickey Mouse that's associated with it, buyer agent commissions uh, being reduced, and now these legal headwinds. These are real things that you need to be taking really serious. That's the reason we want you to focus all your best energies on becoming a listing agent. Hopefully you guys are all internalizing this and knowing what we're telling you is true because it is, because we want you to be in this business for more than a year and a half, which is basically the average lifespan of a new licensee now. Very true. Simple supply and demand. That's going to continue to be the story. So speaking of which, this week's uh, real estate training and coaching podcast is focused on how to find homes for sale. The simple fact is that using the MLS, Zillow, Realtor.com as your primary place to search for homes for sale are over. To succeed in this market, you have got to search for homes for sale in places that other agents won't. And yes, that takes skill and an updated approach. That's why this is part four. That is not a 30-minute one-time podcast about this topic. Next point, point number uh, 17, and this is another source of great consistent listing leads. Uh, In California, this is a home run idea, just FYI, other states as well. Not all states handle probate, which is number 17 the same way, but probate is when someone passes away and their property needs to be sold by their heirs. Uh, It passes through probate attorneys, um, and as far as probate goes, it's again, it's a function of how uh, estates and trusts and wills and whatnot are handled in different states. The best way to find out about this is go to all the leads and they give you guys a huge discount too. Go to all the leads.com forward slash Harris. Go to all the leads plural dot com forward slash Harris. All the leads.com forward slash Harris. Our last name H A R R I S. And you do get a pretty big discount on the service. But what they do is they actually provide you with all the probate leads that are in your marketplace. They will tell you the names. They'll give you the attorney names. They'll give you the phone numbers of the people that are like, for example, if you know your uncle Bob, uh, you know, passes away, and you are now responsible for selling this house for you and your, you know, five siblings or whatever. Well, you're going to be the one that's interacting directly with the probate attorneys, and your phone number is going to be in the all the leads list. You then we'll tell you what to say. We'll tell you how to say it. You can then call that uh, you know person, and then you can solicit that for that listing lead. And oftentimes, you'll find there's no competition when you're seeking probate um, uh, listings. The other thing we're going to show you how to do is if you don't want to go directly to the person that's working um, on behalf of the family, 
the best, most consistent source of probate leads. It's definitely going to probate attorneys. And we also give you the phone numbers or all the leads rather gives you the phone numbers for that as well. So we're huge advocates. It's, uh, the company was started by an old friend of ours who has been a coach for a long time too, Jim. Uh, but go to alltheleads.com forward slash Harris and definitely use the word Harris because that'll definitely give you a discount. I think the first month is free. I believe that's true. And that also comes with some very proven letters. So you send the letters and follow yep. up the phone call that are already uh, edited and copywritten. It's good stuff. So yes, and you're right. There's very little competition with probate. Well, it's because there's very little competition right now, Julie, with anything that requires <laughs> skill true. and being proactive. There's a lot of competition with yeah. buying leads. That's the reason these referral fee companies are charging you guys more and more and more. That's the reason they're able to sell you crappier and crappier leads because they know you'll buy them because you, they know you don't have the skill set to be proactive yeah, and go exactly. after your own. Yeah. Point number 18, Julie. Point number 18. Yes, I'm going to say it. Garage and estate sales. Yes, that's right. They are back and they are quite effective at identifying the next listing in the neighborhood. Facebook Marketplace is actually a great way to connect with people cleaning the house before they get ready to sell. Why do people have garage sales? Because they're getting rid of stuff that they don't need because they're getting ready to stage the house, getting ready to sell it. We talked about that auction mm -hmm. houses on, I think it was the first day. We mm -hmm. talked about basically those are yeah. great people to hook up with too. But I'll tell you, Julie, you're using Facebook as an example. There's somebody in our community mm -hmm. who's been sprinkling on this uh, Facebook group that uh -huh. uh, household items that he's got for sale it's happening on our site too on the, the ladies version yeah like so every day it's probably his wife truthfully possibly yeah I, you know what i bet you're right i bet it is too mm -hmm. yeah so they're putting new stuff up every single day and they're saying this is what we paid this is what we're going to sell it for and then people in the comments will say i'll take it but i was just every time i see that i'm just thinking because i know their house is very valuable i was thinking and they're yeah. clearly moving uh, probably back to the I, I actually know what's going on with them because i talked to the center power of center of influence right? yeah I, i'm 90 percent sure uh, because I happened to talk to one of the people we're talking about at the kids' uh, field day, uh -huh. and she found out what they can actually lease their house for for the summer, where they're going to be gone for six months. And so she's trying to decide whether to sell or lease. Meanwhile, she's getting rid of years and years of stuff. The point is there's – It's no a precursor to selling probably. Exactly, and there's nothing but endless opportunities to do real estate transactions – because, you know, obviously this is going on. We don't sell real estate. Julie and I do not. When we get real estate leads, we refer them to other agents here locally in Puerto Rico and Dorado. I bet we've referred off maybe a dozen leads in the past, maybe tw uh, 12 months, maybe more. And we just refer them off to agents that are generally associated with us uh, as coaching clients and especially those that are associated with us at EXP Realty. By the way, I did mention this yesterday. I received an overwhelming response, so this will be the last day I mention it. If you're interested in joining EXP Realty, it does not matter if you're a new agent, a seasoned agent, or somewhere in the middle. We would love the opportunity to uh, help you explore why that is the next natural step in most of your careers, and we're going to make it even easier for you. You can join EXP Realty without a sponsor, but if you join with a sponsor, especially with Julie and I, you're going to get the added benefit of having, well, yes, Julie and I, but we're also going to give you, and I'm only going to do this 20 times uh, for this month only because, after, which, frankly, we've received a lot of people that are interested. So for 20 of you, if you want to join EXP Realty, if you've not yet chosen a sponsor, if you have, go with the sponsor you've chosen. But if you've not yet chosen a sponsor, Julie and I are formally applying for the job of being your EXP Realty sponsor. And just to make it super easy for you to, to say yes, we're going to give you our premier coaching program for free. That's if you're personally sponsored by Julie or myself. If you're in the process of joining EXP Realty now, and you're filling out the application, and you have not yet chosen a sponsor, choose Julie Harris from Georgetown, Texas. And when that actually happens, let us know, and then we'll obviously extend that to you as well, and you can become a free member of Premier Coaching. Yes, this is the same Premier Coaching we've been selling for years for $3,000. It's only available for those of you who want to join EXP, who want to be sponsored by Julie and I, and it's only available for basically the first 20 of you, of which I probably have maybe eight spots left. So if you're interested, just text me directly at 512-758-0206, 512-758-0206. Julie, point number 19. Point number 19, and this one, you guys want to write this down, this process. So point number 19, scan Zillow, yes, I said Zillow, for listings in the areas that you or your buyers are looking for, listed by brokers or agents who do not belong to your MLS. That's why we're going to Zillow because they will be listed in Zillow oftentimes, but not in your MLS because that out-of-city or out-of-town broker does not belong to your MLS. So let's explain that. If yeah. you want to, um, I'll do it in a version of a story. Sure. Our first year in the business, 
I sold a house. The house was not in the Columbus Board of Realtors MOS. It was in, in a Board of Realtors that was outside of the Columbus Board of Realtors uh, purview. Julie and I were not members of that. Uh, it was like Hawk or Licking County Board of Realtors, yeah. whatever it was. I remember it because it only happened once and it was very painful. I know painful. exactly what you're talking yep. about. <laughs> it was on Beachwald. Yeah. All right. So the we sold the house. The agent, uh, the listing agent took the offer. Everything worked out great. Everything was moving forward. And then at basically the day of closing, um, I, we got the sample. This was back when they were called HUDs, right, settlement statements. There was no buyer agent commission, to which I said WTF. And then the uh, listing agent said, oh, well, we don't have to co-op with you because you're not a member of our board of realtors. And our board of realtors says we don't have to co-op with you. And we're not a member of your board of realtors. Well, we had gotten access to the house because there was a sign in the yard, and we called off the sign. And uh, it wasn't in the Columbus Board of Realtors, but that is what happened. And that never happened again. So what Julie's yeah. expressing to you now is your local Board of Realtors won't, generally speaking, allow any listings that are not uh, essentially where the people aren't also members to be featured on their local MLS, as it should be. But guess what? Of course, Zillow will. And so you need to search Zillow to see if there's any listings that are on there as well. Zillow sometimes has – they have for rent by owner information too. Yeah. They used to have make me move, but I think that's gone. They have a lot of different searches that you can capture things that you're not going to see in your MLS. Even yep. sometimes builders will put stuff up there yep. um, for you know versions of uh, for rent by owner and vacation rent by owner. But it's it, you're going to see stuff that's not in your MLS is the bottom line, which is good for you to be looking for listing leads but also potentially – a match for your buyers, just know what you're sending yourself up for in that case. Okay, so point number 20, door knocking, hot neighborhoods. Door knocking is working really well right now. Don't go empty handed though. Bring something of value, a one page info sheet on the stats for the area, for example. What's pending? What's the average list to sell price ratio, days on the market, etc. Whom do you know who I should be helping buy or sell real estate in this neighborhood? Maybe it's them. Maybe they're going to turn you on to somebody they just had a party with down the street. So we have complete scripts for the door knocking yes. uh, aspects of it. Some of you are going to say, heck yeah, I'm going to door knock. And most of you should be because it's very simple to do. It's very low skilled. And what is it that you should have your hand in your hand? Obviously, the most recent comps. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to what we've been belaboring the last few days, in most cases, everyone's going to be thrilled to hear from you. So whatever your ego is telling you is going to come as a result yeah. of you knocking on people's doors. Uh, you know, Forget that because it's wrong. They're going to be thrilled to hear from you because you are going to be like, now I'm going to date myself, but you're going to be Ed McMahon knocking on their door to deliver a million-dollar check, right? You're going to be – here's a really dating myself. They have myself. no idea who you're I know. talking about. You're going to be Willy Wonka, right, who's put go. the golden ticket in, in the uh, chocolate bar. In other words, you are going to be someone that's telling them fantastic news about what the value of their house is, and they're going to be thrilled to talk with you. Many of them do not assume that sellers are sitting around thinking about what their houses are worth. They don't know, and there's, I bet you, zero markets in the country right now where sellers will not be absolutely thrilled when you knock on the door and let them know that you are here. Uh, obviously, That's you want to let. News. Maybe you have a it, different scripts take different posturing. For example, mm -hmm. maybe there was a house just sold in the neighborhood. It wasn't necessarily your listing or even your brokerage, but you can let them know about it. Maybe you have a buyer that's looking or several buyers are looking in the neighborhood. That's what your flyer is. Here's a list of the buyers you're working with. Do you know of anybody that might be a good match? Those types of things. We teach you guys all this in Premier Coaching. It gives you the ammunition to feel comfortable and confident to go knock on the door. And remember, everyone's going to love to hear from you. And one of the most successful agents, I tell this story, and you know, it's funny, you and I only met her once or twice, mm -hmm. but her name was Lisa McKivergen. Yeah, and she great. was an age, a REMAX agent. Julie and I started out, we were with REMAX. And she was in what town? Granville, I think. Granville, Ohio. That's right. And the story goes, and this is, it's kind of, at least back in our era, it was a, um, you know, sort of a mythical story. Mm -hmm. But it was even better because it was true. Mm -hmm. So when she was pregnant and she was a young lady, I think she was in her 20s, she went, her job or her mission was to go and meet every single homeowner in Granville, Ohio. Now, Granville, Ohio is not huge, but it's not small, especially walking around when you're pregnant. Yeah. And she did it. And she the story goes that she went and met every single seller, every single homeowner, and she knocked on the door introducing themselves. And from that, she became, and she, I, I'll be shocked if it wasn't still true, yeah. she became the number one listing agent, opening up the number one brokerage in Granville, Ohio. And uh, I think that's just a testament to the you know people. Why? So why was that so effective? Because 
people loved the fact that here was someone who was ambitious, who was actually taking, uh, you know, trying to build something for herself, who was being a leader, not just by flapping her jaws about it on Instagram, though there was no Instagram back then, sure. but actually going out there and meeting people and then sharing information and being helpful. But that, she was also very, very consistent. She didn't yeah. just dabble in this. She just didn't have like her pet neighborhood that she did this every now and then. She made it her mission to speak with everyone and more than once. This was her thing. And, you know, everything on our list does work better when you're consistent about it. And you don't just try it out and, you know, kind of half do it. So but, she's a great example of somebody that won because of all those conversations. Well, think about the power of getting to know the neighborhoods. I know. Think about the power of not just like, you know, she's not waiting to have buyers to go see a particular neighborhood. She's knocking on the doors and getting to know the neighborhood that way. Think about the fact that all these people that she's meeting, all these neighbors she's meeting, she's picking up rumors everywhere. You know, oh, well, yeah. so-and-so down the street is going to sell the house. This is the power of being proactive. These proactive approaches are extra, 1,000x more powerful because there's such a huge number of you guys that are listening right now who are not being told to be proactive. You're being told to be passive. Build your brand. Work on your social networking. Work on your funnels. Do your this, this, and your other things. Look, guys, if you want to do that stuff, you can, but you got to do the proactive stuff first because the proactive stuff obviously puts you in front of actual potential clients opposed to you hoping and praying that someone's going to react to your clever ad. That's right. So point number 22, sponsor and participate at a high level in your community. Did we do that one? No, you did not. 21. You know what? We did 21. Sorry. Okay. We'll go back to 22. 21, expand and upgrade. I love this point because there's so many cool things you can do here, and it, it is a fun way to get more business. Expand and upgrade your own center of influence and talk about real estate all the time. Don't be a secret agent. Join new clubs, organizations, gyms, or other groups so you get to know more people and enjoy more organic referrals. Orange Theory. Shout out to Tammy Irby, who just got into Orange Theory last week. Uh, kids sports groups, your homeowners uh, association, arts organizations. All of these can upgrade and expand your own center of influence. You love getting referrals where they know, love, and trust you. You got to expand your center of influence. And look, we talk endlessly on this podcast about the importance of centers of influence and past clients. We give you tons of scripts in our coaching program. You guys get the gist of it. Again, have you noticed that all the things we're sharing with you about how to generate listing leads are predicated on you talking to people, not sitting behind your computer and sending texts and doing all this other uh. passive stuff? And don't you ultimately – and I look, Julie and I, believe it or not, are dorky introverts big time, Mrs. Harris far more than me. Mm. But the reality of it is we both are, true <laughs> yeah, or false. Absolutely. But we have taught ourselves – um, now, how did we do it originally? Well, first of all, we didn't wait around to learn how to do it. We just went out and did it. And then we backfilled as our, uh, well, this saying this worked, saying this didn't. Doing this worked, doing that didn't. And that's how we ultimately created our, our long-term success selling real estate. And those were the seeds that have basically have created our, our coaching programs as well. You don't have to create anything. You can just copy what has already proven to work in all marketing conditions and, uh, frankly, all interest rate environments and all price ranges. That's the benefit. And that's So if you're serious about being successful quickly in real estate, why wouldn't you do what's proven to work in every single marketplace? Of course you would. That's the reason many of you want to join Premier Coaching. By the way, again, I will mention this one more time. I'm probably not going to mention it tomorrow. If you're interested in joining Julie and I at eXp Realty, um, we are sweetening the pot for you. If you have not yet uh, chosen a sponsor at eXp Realty, if you have, stick with that sponsor. If not, Julie and I would love the opportunity to earn the rights to be your sponsor, and we're going to give you, well, probably eight of you because we I was making 20 spots available. So 80, I'm sorry, eight are going to be available. We're not going to give more than that away because this is a premier coaching program. We sell this for $3,000. We've been selling this for years. But for 20 of you, we're going to allow you to join premier coaching for free when you're personally sponsored by Julie and I, which means Julie and I are your personal sponsors at eXp Realty, which means you get the added benefit of, guess what, having Julie and I as your personal sponsors at eXp Realty. Are. And there's all kinds of things that come with that. But if you're interested, please text me directly at 512-758-0206, 512-758-0206. Uh, Julie, next point. Point number 22, which is kind of related to 21, just a different uh, twist to it. Sponsor and participate at a high level in your community. Parades, parties, farmers markets, beach cleanups. Use your Ford script. Remember, that's talking about family, occupation, recreation, and dreams to get to know people and talk about real estate. You want people to say, we see you everywhere. You're that real estate person, right? And then know you by name. So do get involved. You know, I remember uh, in Laguna Beach, we had a coaching client for a while who 
like ninety percent of his business came from doing things like beach cleanups, and yep. he would uh, he would bring the bags to the people at farmers markets because they never brought their own. He was like everybody knew him. One of our most yeah. of our most successful agents, what they do is they either involve themselves, which frankly is the easy button, yep. involve themselves in existing charities or they start their own. We have a whole bunch of ideas that we give you in Premier Coaching. One of the ones that Julie and actually Coach Rochelle thought of years and years ago was the pumpkin drive. I don't remember what we called it. But every it started out in our front yard when we lived in New Albany. Pumpkin Palooza. Pumpkin Palooza. And then it expanded. And it was quite obviously, you know, during Halloween, we would have a local farmer drop off a whole bunch of pumpkins. And, yes, we had to unload the pumpkins from the truck. And, yes, this was very rudimentary, but it worked. And then what we did is the kids would come by and they would uh, buy pumpkins. Our donation was the cost of the pumpkins. 100% of the proceeds that were coming from the sale of the pumpkins were then going to whatever the local charity was, which probably was a humane society because that's the other thing Julie and I were actively involved in. Eventually it expanded and we were doing it in a field by the uh, elementary school. Mm -hmm. But you get the concept here. That's something that really worked. And now how do we take it to the next level? We combine it with the American Red Cross because what the American Red Cross will do if you set up a place for them to do a blood drive is they will actually call into – call, not email, call, not Facebook ad. They'll pick up the phone and their volunteers will call into the local community of people that have donated blood before and invite them to your event that you're you know, essentially co-hosting. American Red Cross, Tim and Julie Harris, uh, Pumpkin Palooza, and that was always a home run for us. And after we moved – out of Ohio, we would get people for years that were asking us if we were doing it again. Now, we were hoping that somebody else was going to pick up the reins and start running with it, even a, a formal competitor, but they didn't. But if, that, if you're in Columbus, Ohio, and Welby specifically, I promise you there is a huge demand for people to have free pumpkins in Halloween, provided you're attached to the right charity. That's a super fun event, actually. It was, but that's the yeah. every single one of these points. That's right. Now, in Premier Coaching, we also fun. give them a 12-month center of influence plan. Where we go through, we literally go through That's month point after three. month. Yes. Okay. So we go through month after month with what to do. Point number 23 is prospect your professional sphere of influence. Your mortgage originators are approving people right now who haven't even started looking for a home and aren't working with an agent. These are like the buyers you're dreaming of who actually get pre-qualified before they look. You know, so ask those lenders weekly for the referrals. Stagers, especially in luxury markets, are a fantastic source of pre-listing leads. Service providers often find out someone is moving before agents do. So connect them and ask them regularly to refer business to you. Make sure you're referring business to them as well. Makes sense. Now, there's a hidden benefit of doing, and these are the, that was 23 is our last point, but obviously I think we gave you guys over 30 ideas in the last yeah. four days. But here's a hidden benefit, the psychological benefit from doing things the way that we prescribe that you do them. When you're in action, your emotional state changes. If action is not, there is action involved with going to a website and trying to set up a landing page or doing Facebook ads or doing a TikTok video and all the rest of it. But nothing is going to be as emotionally reinforcing as doing the proactive lead generation like we just described over the last four days. You're going to be you as a real estate professional in front of largely people you don't know. You will have our scripts and our objection handlers. You'll know what to say, though frankly you won't get any objections. You're going to be you in action as a real estate professional. Emotionally, what's going to happen is as you see yourself as that person that you've always wanted to be, or maybe you're a seasoned veteran now and you're doing fantastic, but you've gotten away from the proactive lead generation. You're noticing that your business is kind of starting to struggle a little bit because the market's not changing. You're not changing enough with the market. Don't wait around for the market to change back. It isn't going to anytime soon, certainly for the, not the rest of the year. If anything, whatever you're suffering from is going to become acute faster than you can possibly imagine. We've seen this happen three different times in our real estate coaching careers, and it's going to happen now because of all the things we've talked about. Don't I'm not giving you doom and gloom. I'm not giving you bad news. What I'm trying to do is motivate you to become the proactive lead generator that you know in your heart and soul you can actually be. Imagine how you're going to feel when you start participating more in your community, being uh, contributing more to helping other people. Imagine how you're going to feel when you're actually creating new leads and closing business from actually having a conversation with a stranger opposed to this uh, addiction you've maybe uh, created for yourself buying uh, buying business or believing that somehow you don't have what it takes to create your own leads because you're so addicted to buying them. A lot of you, I would say 99% of you, have never learned how to be proactive lead generators. If you are looking for an excuse to do it, this is the market. Learn how to do it now. Don't wait around to see if what we're telling you is true. 
unless you have a huge pot of gold or Bitcoin or crypto, whatever the hell it is, right? Yeah. Unless you have an enormous amount of savings, whatever is whatever worked last year to generate business is going to work at a lesser and lesser degree, faster than you've ever experienced before because all the things that are happening. And that's perfectly fine. It is what it is. There's no reason for you to camp out and wait for the clouds to clear. Good. You should be happy the market is changing because the market, a changing market, creates opportunities for those who are proactive because you know because you're smart that in a changing market, in a changing world, most people will feed into and react to their innate feeling of fear and they won't go the opposite direction, which is taking action, realizing that their highest and truest purpose on this planet is to be of service to other people. And being of service to other people in a market like this is going to create so much more forward momentum that you will, uh, you guys, in six months and 12 months, you'll be a different person. You won't even remember the person you were today because of the fact that you're now going to be that successful agent you want to be. But it takes massive action because of this market. Anything else you'd like to say? Well, I mean, my latest elite clients, because as you know, I was adding some elite clients to my schedule. They are, I think, to a person past podcast listeners, of course. which is fantastic. I love that because, you know, it's not as hard work for me. When they, when they know <laughs> concepts like your magic number, your spokes in the wheel, the Ford script, they, they have the 30,000 foot view and they've largely implemented many of those things and they've gotten to a certain point. It's certainly gotten them through, uh, you know, surviving real estate in the first place because I have some newer agents. It's gotten the grizzled veterans to the next level. But what, so why do they come to elite coaching is so that we can create systems we can backfill things that they didn't get from just being a podcast listener, right? Because they have little missing But they're things, looking for the right? accountability. But and they're the, also looking for your yeah. experience. But you realize what you're setting yourself up for right now, right? Maybe a couple more coaching Okay, points. so you want a couple more. So just two a more, more. Two more? Yes. Well, describe your perfect coaching client. Well, ideally, somebody – you know, I have had some newbies, we just say with them. love. But, but really somebody – I mean, my perfect co- coaching client usually is somebody who is 8 to 15, maybe 20 million – uh, in volume, and that could, you know, different price ranges, different areas, but has some years of experience, has worked with buyers and sellers, but wants to get to the next level and has maybe done the same production for two or three years. You, and they know they're missing systems, they're missing accountability. You don't have to sell them into. No, I won't. It's exactly. That's it's the boat thing, right? Yes. That we get from our friend Dave Kennard. That's right. You know, who's the, a president of VXP. So, and we learned this from, and I love it too. So, you know, Julie and I and all of our great coaching clients and all of our community, we're in a boat. And and a lot of you guys are out in the water. Maybe you don't even realize you're out in the water. But what you don't realize is the waters are shark infested. And so some of you, and we're wanting to save as many of and this is actually how we think. So I don't know if this is even right to admit this is how we actually think. Some of you are not going to want to be saved because here's what we're going to see. We're in our boat and some of you are swimming away from us. We're calling for you. You can definitely hear us. You're saying, you know what? I'm going to figure it out on my own. I'm going to keep swimming. I'm going to find land. I'm going to make my own boat. I don't believe in your boat. I'm going to look for an easier boat, whatever the hell it is, right? So some of you are swimming away, and obviously we can't help you. Others of you, and this is what a lot of you are, frankly, you're swimming in circles. And and you're swimming in circles to the point where you're going to eventually, you know, you're not going to have the energy to keep swimming and the energy manifests itself and frankly running out of, uh, you know, motivation and running out of money in some cases. And then you're going to sink and then you're shark bait. You guys get it? Now others, so you're swimming in circles. What should I do? What should I start? I got to learn more. I'm getting ready to get started. I want to try this out. I want to try that out. Blah, 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 blah. And then others of you are, sw- now here's the mistake we've made in the past 20 years as real estate coaches. We have focused too much on trying to save those of you who are swimming in circles. What we have evolved to realize is the ones we really want to focus on are the ones that are already swimming in our direction because those are the people we can have the most impact on. So if you're wanting to have a really high level coach and you know, arguably the most experienced real estate coach. She's been called that in the nation. You know, thankfully they refer to, uh, to Julie that way and not me because <laughs> more people want to hire Julie than me, which is perfect. But if you're looking for a very experienced real estate coach, someone who's not going to mess around with you, you need to hire Julie Harris. She said she's willing to take on two clients. Julie and I, between the two of us, we have basically a handful of clients. We used to have dozens and dozens of personal clients, but now we don't. And Julie likes doing the personal coaching. So if you're interested in being personally coached by Julie, she does have criteria. It's not cheap. And if you think you're a fit, you can text me directly at 512-758-0206, 512-758-0206. And it's perfect for the broker 
uh, someone wanting to form a team, someone who's you know wanting to downsize out of a team, a very motivated and a new a new agent who's got their head screwed on straight, which is what she was trying to describe yeah. before. You a know, few. some right a few. Well, someone who comes yeah. from business experience who knows. Ideally, yes, yeah, that's, right. that's what you're looking for. Like yeah. yeah, so that's what she's looking for. So if you're interested in being personally coached by Julie. 512-758-0206. Text me. I'll do a little bit of light pre-qualifying, and then you can speak with her. And, yeah, that is our show for today. So, Julie, what are yes. we talking about starting tomorrow? I have a few that are underway. One of the things that I'm working on, because they work so well, this is probably a, a one-time show, open houses are killing it. Yep. But I've gotten a very specific, there probably be two parts to this, a specific question about what if it's not my open house? How do I handle another agent's open house? What are the rules of play, and how do I actually turn that into leads for me? I like so this, we're going to get into that. I like this concept uh, because, A, it's something everyone can do. B, it's something they can be in action doing and feel confident doing. C, it doesn't cost any money. Yep. Um, and the next reason is, is because they will finally realize what we've been telling them all these years is true, that the best leads are always the ones driving the neighborhood. The yes. worst leads are the ones they get online. That's right, and this is so a let's great do way. It. Yeah, this is a great way to meet multiple people because open houses really are killing it with low inventory. For sure. You get a great turnout. You force yourself to have to know specific things that we'll get into about the house. That Let's makes do you it. a better agent, right? You actually, you know, have to talk to people. You have to actually do lead follow-up. You have to actually use your pre-qualification scripts. So it's a way that we can lightly force them into action without being, you know, too confrontational. And seasoned grizzled veterans agents, oh, I'm too busy. I don't do that type of stuff. The reason you need to go back to doing it is because it reinforces the right activities. As this market starts to adjust and, frankly, as the headwinds start to increase, you're going to not have to rebuild the muscles to actually be a proactive lead generator. We're trying to save yourself. We are trying to save you from the inevitability of what's going to continue to happen in this market. And guys, listen, the lack of inventory, the rising interest rates, all the other Mickey Mouse that's happening, th because of those things and many other reasons, this is one of the best opportunities we've ever seen uh, to be getting into real estate, let alone taking your business to the next level. When it's a hot seller's market and anybody with a pulse can sell a house, that's actually, guys, that market kind of sucks. Because then it becomes a beauty contest and it's not based on skill. Now it's going to be based on skill. It's easier to get the skill than it is to learn how to make a masterful YouTube or TikTok video or wait around for branding and marketing to work for you. Skill is something you can control. Ultimately, guys, this comes down to what Julie and I preach about in our book, Harris Rules. You want to be building your mansion on land you own. What many of you have done, and it's very difficult not to do this nowadays because it's so easy to be seduced by people selling you leads, selling you CRM, selling you different platforms. You want to be building your business, or your, I'm sorry, your mansion on land you own. That means build your business on something that's skills-based versus something that you're having to buy. Because if you're having to buy it, they can change the algorithm. They can just go out of business. They can you know, decide that the lead cost is going to go up more or whatever, whatever. You're not in control of your destiny. You're just beholden to buying leads or buying your business. Build a business that's based on you owning the mansion and owning the land. Then you've got a real asset, but it starts with what's between your ears. Hopefully that resonates with all of you, though I do know it doesn't, and I uh, wish the, those who it doesn't resonate with the best of luck. But those of you guys who are swimming towards the boat, uh, we're, hands are out. We're going to pull you in. Those of you who are in the boat, get ready to basically have more p hands come out of the water wanting to be helped up in the boat. That's what we're here for. That is our community. If there's anything we can do for you guys, remember to text me directly at 512-758-0206. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow.